Founded in 1999 by Jason Burks, Retrospect Films is Oklahoma's largest turnkey production company of its kind. With over two decades of experience, a full-time team of over 20 talented individuals, a 12,000 square foot studio to create in, and thousands of successfully completed projects in both entertainment and advertising. You're in the right place if you like hearing some good old filmmaking stories. On this podcast, we will discuss the pursuit of creating things and the problems we solve by digging up projects from across the last 20 years and giving you a glimpse behind the scenes where the magic happens. You're listening to Retrospect Films from the Archives. Hey. Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining us on Retrospect from the Archives, where we discuss the pursuit of creating things and the problems that we solve in that process. We've been digging up projects that are active and projects from the previous years and sort of discussing all the nuances that have made them successful. Today, I am hanging out with some of my favorite people, Lauren. Lauren Beach, who uh, has joined Retrospect over a year ago. Almost two. Almost two years. Oh my gosh, you're right. We're coming up on it. Uh, Lauren's one of the greatest people that you'll ever meet and um, still to this day holds the record of the best references I've ever called (laughs) in my entire career. Thank you to everyone. All of her references were like, we're currently creating a position to hire her. So if you don't hire her, let us know. I was like, I'm I'm hiring her. Don't don't do that. (laughs) (laughs) And Adam, Adam V. Hill. What are you, five years now? Six years? I think it'll be six this year. Yeah. Which is crazy. We're going to all become old people together. Isn't that weird? I was a young man. We all met up as young men, (laughs) and like eventually we're all going to be old and gray and be like, we're still cool, right? Hopefully. As long as you think I'm cool, I think you're cool. Yeah. Um, So we're going to talk today about Cenogents. So if you don't know Cenogents, you might know LipSense. LipSense is probably one of their biggest products that the world knows, Um, but a lot of their entire uh, beauty line is in that same vibe. They have a lot of makeup that, I guess you don't call it permanent. What do you call it, Lauren? What's the proper terminology? Budge-proof, smudge-proof, waterproof. That's right. Budge-proof, smudge-proof, waterproof makeup. So, um, you know, a couple years ago, one of my friends who works there uh, hit me up and said, Hey, we have some opportunities. We'd love a little bit of help. I was excited mainly because honestly, that friend of mine, Cassie, we used to go roller skating together in the sixth grade. <laughs> so I was like, Hey, flashback, let's do this. Let's have fun and listen to nineties music and create Cinegen's videos. It's been a really fun time working on, uh, projects for them. One of the things we had to ask ourselves in the very beginning, which is what we're going to kind of dissect in today's episode is when you're shooting beauty, how do you do it? absolutely the best. Uh, The things that they were asking uh, much involved photography, videography, cinematography, creating uh, potent ads that would be used in a social space and a digital space to promote their products, tell the story of their products, and then some different brand videos and other longer videos, even a national TV commercial that we created for Cinegents uh, that ran during, I think it was Miss America a couple years ago. So it's been really fun working on it. I think one of the things I like the most about beauty is just that the attention to detail really matters. The color matters, the lighting matters, the color grade matters, the type of camera you use matters, the lensing matters, everything matters a lot. And there's a lot of forgiveness in things like say construction or just a lot of different areas, industrial stuff where it's like, hey, like, yeah, that's great. That looks good. But in beauty, it's very nuanced, super, super nuanced, high, high psycho attention to detail. So before I talk too much, Lauren, let's hand it off to you. Talk a little bit about the beginning of that relationship and kind of what the ask was, what the need was, and and then and take us into that endeavor. Initially, when we started with Cenogens, we started creating actual social media ads for them. You have to lean in social media ads there you for go. them. Um, and so the initial ask was, hey, we'd like five to six videos. It may be over a specific product or product line. Um, and we were placing that ad. So we were doing ad buy for them on social. We were monitoring the results of that. Um, and then over time, that they ended up performing really well. We would track clicks and an average spend that people were purchasing when they would click through to their website. And then it turned into, could you guys create more content for us? Can we have more recurring social video content on our social media, um, which for them is Facebook and Instagram. And they were really building their social media team. They had two people. At one point, they had three people. Um, and it was really about creating 
a lot of video content on those platforms. And so they, they just asked us if we could kind of help in that effort with them. Talk to me a little bit about the, when she start getting into the details, what, uh, cause there's a lot of things like the duration of the videos and how many shots go into a video and then the actual shooting of the videos. What are some of the things that you guys have learned that have helped make these videos successful for them? For them in particular, it's really about selling texture or selling a result. So having people with great skin, having um, diverse skin tones to really show off the products that they have. A lip color will look different on someone with fair skin than someone with olive or darker skin. Um, so having a variety of individuals there. Um, there's also the option of we want to create it and have it be beautiful and really clean, but we also kind of want to make you not know that it was professionally done, <laughs> especially if you're posting on Instagram or Facebook. You want it. Um, they were having a lot of success with user-generated content, and so we were trying to incorporate that in, but still have it be absolutely beautiful. The color needed to match. Um, their skin needs to look great because Cinegens isn't just makeup. They also had hair care and skin care products that they were wanting to um, promote. And so it was how can we incorporate all of that together and really make that a great effort for them? Um, they're also really great because because they had a social media team. They knew what they wanted. They knew the look, the style they wanted. Um, we would have multiple phone calls leading up to a social shoot, which traditionally our shoots were all day. Sometimes we would have models present. Sometimes we would just create what they reference as a swatch video. So really wanting to show the color and texture of a product. Um, but they knew what they wanted. And so it was more of, hey, some of our social clients want us to come up with all the creative on on our own and we're kind of pitching them ideas. They knew exactly what they wanted and we were having to come in and execute that perfectly for them. And so that was something that was unique about creating content for them. That's great. I want to talk a little bit about the lighting because I think in beauty, uh, the lighting and the camera angles are really important. Um, when you think about how do you make someone look really good? And even in beauty, like the Cinegen's products, they, I mean, they're incredible products and they actually do what they say they're going to do. But in conjunction with a beautiful product, you have to light it in a beautiful fashion because you can make anything look ugly with really bad lighting. Um, I think let's let's jump over to you, Adam, for a second. Um, and, and I might add a little bit here too, but talk to me about you know some of the projects, uh, even working in conjunction with Lauren's team, uh, you also came on and shot a lot of different stuff. Give me some of your perspectives on the lighting aspects and the camera aspects of just shooting faces and making them look beautiful. Yeah, there's a lot to be said about like the kind of nitty gritty, like mathematical stuff of like making sure the skin tones are in a certain um, percentage of the exposure and looking at your waveforms and your false color and all of that stuff. So there is a lot of um, stuff you do on set to make sure that the skin tones are playing in the edit the way they look in reality because um, you know you mentioned it earlier but one of the things I really like about these types of projects are when a lot of stuff isn't arbitrary like the color grade has to be what it is in reality um, there's no you can't really take an artistic uh, you know bend to like I want the skin tones to look like this or I want the the colors to kind of fade this way it has to look exactly the way the products were designed to look because you know it's false advertising otherwise but um, so lighting everything um, Getting the skin tones to look a certain way, um, you know. Sometimes we have large groups of people interacting with each other. Like I think one of the Christmas promotions was just uh, like ten people um, on the white wall. So that's like getting the white wall to expose right, and then Matt, and then bringing the light, keying all the people, and then making sure all of the skin tones look right on that, and the pro the products that are on the people, and and the hair, and all everything kind of has to be dialed in perfectly. Otherwise, if one thing is off, when you get into post, you either have to do a lot of work to fix that one thing or everything is – it's just a domino effect of all of these changes you have to make to match everything up. And I so you kind of have to look at it in – like as if you were shooting visual effects plates where you know you're going to do a certain amount of work in post, um, which was kind of a, a cool challenge for me because I – prefer to shoot something and the way it is in camera is pretty much how it plays out on screen. And so that was a cool challenge of like maybe maybe dropping this um I forgot what it was, Lauren. What was, it was the thing a body we dropped? Butter. Yeah, a body butter. Multiple takes. Yeah, we had to a, get the body butter. A, a fish tank. 
<laughs> where we're we have it suspended and then we drop it in and it's slow motion. We're getting all of like the bubbles and everything at a really high speed, but we had to overlight it in a certain way so that the water wouldn't reflect and and we're trying to get it to line up in a perfect focal point so that you could read the text on it. And it's a lot of trial and error and a lot of kind of anticipating cropping around certain aspects of the fish tank that were glaring. So, um, and then even with that is, you know, I'm shooting it, but then I'm communicating to our post team of like, hey, this is how um, it's looking. Is this going to be an issue? Like, should I solve this issue on set first? Or is this something you can easily roto so that I can kind of move on to other things? So um, there's a lot of like hyper specific detailed, like you said, um, to matching all of those things, the skin tones, the colors of even just the physical color of the product, like the the packaging and stuff mm-hmm. has to be on point. Um, and so that gets carried out from production all the way through post. And so it's a lot of communication from our team, um, being on set, and then also just working with the actors and making sure they apply everything the, the way Cinegens wants them to. There's always a process of like dot here, dab here, slide here, like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so learning about makeup, for, uh, at the beginning I knew nothing about it. So learning the difference between like a lip gloss and a lipstick and all like everything that goes into like a blush and how to apply it was yeah. definitely a learning curve for me. But I think one thing that I have to take the opportunity to add on just cause I like to nerd out and talk about lighting, but you know, one thing that not everyone thinks about, and it's, it's not, I wouldn't necessarily say it's theoretical, even though it is in the light theory space, when you're lighting a human and you're trying to make them beautiful, if that's like the objective, like you're not trying to be moody, you're not trying to motivate a certain time of day, you're just trying to make them beautiful. Uh, so much of that re- resolves around how large is the key light? And in film, the key light, that is that means that's the light that's bringing the majority of the luminance to what you're looking at. And the source, the size of the source has such an impact. Like if I'm lighting Adam and the source is the size of my fist and it's right here, then we already know that the rays are going to come out of that fixture and they're going to depart this point. And if they come at him like that, they're probably going to cast shadows in a lot of different ways. When you're doing beauty, you want that source to be as big as the head, if not as big as the body. And the bigger you make that source and the more you diffuse that light, the more the light waves scatter. And when they scatter, they fill in all the little deviations in the skin. And so when you actually look at light waves and like in lighting, we're always diffusing things when we want it soft. So it's like you throw up a really big fixture, you throw a silk in front of it. Maybe you throw another silk in front of that. Maybe you move that silk two feet from the fixture, maybe four feet from the fixture. Maybe you bounce that fixture off of something that's white and then reflect it back. And the reason you're doing all those things in beauty is because you're trying to get all those light rays, instead of traveling in a linear spectral line, which is specular light, you're trying to get them to fuse and be like this. And as they are like that and they're all over the place, they fill in pores they fill in your nostrils, they fill in under your eyes. And that's why so many times that you see a lot of photo studios in Los Angeles are just these big flats with windows on every side and then white wall paint everywhere. And the reason why is that light travels into those windows, it hits that white wall paint, it hits the floor and the whole place becomes just like omniluminant. And someone walks into it and their skin just looks beautiful because there's light coming from every direction, very soft. And that, and that, you know, that's a very nerd out scientific perspective, but that is the reality of what's happening. So in this beauty situation where you're going, I want these people to look beautiful all those things have to go into an account, especially when like Adam was talking about like 10 people, like how do you soft light 10 people? Oh my Lord. Massive fixture, massive, massive everything. And that, that, that was like, it's funny too, because you know, we live in a day and age where technology has come so far in the last decade. And there's a lot of people in this industry now that are like 17 years old and they're like, I got a 5d, I can do anything. And I'm not discrediting those people, but the true reality of the scale of your fixture, the physical scale of the fixture to the human body has a gigantic impact on your ability to actually light someone beautifully because the size of humans is not going to change. So you have to have big fixtures and you have to diffuse the heck out of them to really get soft light. So that's that's another challenge. I mean, I love challenges. That's why I'm in this business. Um, but that's one of the things about Cinegens that I love is it brings that to the table of we have to make these people look their absolute best. And to make them look their best, you have to do it right. And to do it right, 
It's not easy. And that challenge is kind of fun. Well, Lauren, I want to throw it back to you. What are some of the things that you feel like you have learned, uh, you know, not only technically, you know, we're me and Adam over here talking about all the technical stuff, but there's a lot of things. I mean, I remember even looking at some of your reports over the years and going, wow, like this month we, we caused 60, $80,000 of sales for them. And, and being able to look at the numbers of things that generate, uh, wow, way more people like this video, but this video was this kind of video. And I thought maybe that kind of video would have reaped more results. What things do you feel like you've learned in working with Cinegents that has been kind of uh, unique? and unusual for them um their audience i mean you're talking about a social media following where they have over 200,000 followers on facebook they have 75,000 on instagram and so we're able to look and see as they're posting content from all different sources some from us some that they create on their own within their team um what's performing well and we're always looking at that um for them tutorials performed really well anything that can catch your attention. So that very first frame that comes on screen, if someone's scrolling through social media, that first one to two seconds is really important. So videos where we had, I'm thinking of one in particular where we did, it was from the holiday shoot, but um, Adam ended up changing the camera angle on one of the products where we saw it swatch from the side Mm -hmm. instead of from above. And it sounds weird, but We would always joke like the texture, the goop, the ooze, the whatever. If you can show it squirting in a hand, coming out of a bottle, Mm -hmm. dripping down. Um, But the very first opening shot, you just see it smooth across. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, that's an eyeshadow, but it's a cream. It's thick. You can draw a conclusion just from just seeing that initial shot. And so swatch videos perform really, really well for them. Um, We recently did, it was an influencer collaboration. And it was a whole day shoot where we rented out an Airbnb. We had three different local influencers come in and that is performing so well for them. It was for a product launch. They recently launched um, a collagen product, a powdered collagen that you could put in, make drinks. And so the whole shoot was a stylized lifestyle. How would you use this product in real life? So they had recipes, they were cooking, making drinks, making protein balls. Um, We were showing off how it helps hair, skin, nails. And so that's been performing really well for them. So it's social media changes so much, especially for beauty products. So initially it's, hey, this is 30, 45 seconds. We're placing an ad. We're trying to get people that don't know anything about Cinegents to, okay, now we're creating content for them. These are already people who are following them. They know their brand at some level. They have an awareness of who they are. We got to hook them in 10 to 15 seconds. We got to show them a product. They need to look at it. Mm-hmm. And all social media content for products is that. You're selling an end result. We have to, You have to be able to watch our video and say, I want that. Mm-hmm. And that's the goal. As, as beautiful people, beautiful products, things that work, but you, your ultimate goal is that someone watches that video and says, I need to see how I can buy that. Yeah. And so that's the goal for them. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, that's very cool. Well, I feel like, you know, unless, unless Adam, is there any other things that you want to add? Hmm. I mean, I think it, it was, it's pretty cool when you look at these shoots that, you know, there's usually a script and a concept that we're trying to execute, but then we know like in the back of our minds that a lot of these shots that we're doing, just like visually speaking, are going to be reused and repurposed throughout. So they could have much longer lifespan than, than just a singular spot. So I think that's, also kind of a unique thing where we know that um, the things we're doing now could be reused and could last. So it, it kind of adds like that sense of like, we better get it right. And we better do it right because um, this is going to have a long shelf life. And I always, I'll, I've just always been drawn to projects like that. I think it's really cool that doing things that you know are going to last and have a lot of shelf life. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, Cinegens has been, it's also been a unique project for Retrospect in that, I mean, almost every person that works at Retrospect in some way or shape or form is touching something with it. You know, we do event photography for some of their events and we do, you know, I've done some of the brand videos and flew to California and shot a bunch of stuff there. And, you know, you shot a lot of stuff in the studio here and Lauren's hanging out with them every single month. And so, uh, it's been a, it's been a cool thing. I think, you know, even though it's not the point of this podcast, but I think even speaking back to that idea of like, if you're really going to do 
uh, incredible visual work in this industry, you have to be really committed. Like, you know, it's just like, it's a reality. Like we need to know all the things that they know. It needs to really matter to us. I think that when you were describing images that are long lasting, it's true. Like, are we creating master images that hopefully have years and years of shelf life that are very valuable and done correctly with all the right details, right angle, right lighting, right timing, all that stuff. And, and this, uh, the stuff of Cinegence is definitely an example of that where everything we do, it's like, okay, this is, this, this could go on for a long time. So, well, that's awesome. Well, that concludes today's podcast talking about Cinegence. Uh, I suppose if we interested you, you can go to their website, Yeah. go buy some lipstick or some blush or anything, some collagen hair or some, spray. some hair product, just yeah. buy any they of it. They got it all. They, they have, have it all. all. Um, but if you want to watch some more podcasts, go to our website, retrospectfilms.com. Uh, you can also find our podcast on Apple, uh, what's it called? Apple, Apple podcasts, Apple podcast and Spotify, I believe. That's right. I don't know. I used to know, but you know, it's on Facebook. We're everywhere. Just go everywhere. everywhere. Just use the Google, <laughs> use the Google and you'll find us. Um, well, we appreciate you guys joining us for retrospect from the archives and we will see you on the next episode. See ya. Bye. Bye.